Hi, welcome back to my channel and for today's video, we will be talking about the infinite limits of function. And uh, for today's video, I'm sorry, I still don't have a plant with me, but I am very proud to um, show you this collection down here as my plant. Okay, I, as you can see. And before I'll start with uh, the video for the day, I would just like to extend my thanks to the people who have been supporting me for a very long time. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon. Also, um, if you have any questions or clarification, don't hesitate to comment down there so that I would know. And in that way, we can discuss uh, about that. And also, um, if you would like to request a specific topic in math, I'll do my best as I can in order for me to um, help you with that. So let's start now for the infinite limits of function. So assuming you have a function um, f of x to be um, 2 over um, x minus 1 squared, Okay, um, if we are going to investigate the behavior of some values of f as x um, gets close to 1, so we're aiming that x gets close to 1, um, I have values here. I already have um, made a computation for this earlier. So let's say this is your x, this is your f of x. So when x is 3, um, that will um, your f of x is 0 0.5 when x is 2 your f of x is 2 when x is 1.1 your x is 200 when x is 1.01 this is equivalent to 20,000 and if it's 1.001 this is actually 2 million okay similarly if um, okay let's do this in this way again um, this time we will check on the left side part of x. So we will also check on um, the values less than uh, 1. Okay, let's start with negative 1. When x is negative 1, this f of x is 0 0.5. When x is 0, f of x is 200. When um, x is uh, 0 0.99, your x uh, f of x is 200 i'm sorry it's 20000 so it's 20000 and if it's 0 0.999 your x uh, f of x is 2 million okay so that means if we are going to picture this out in a graph it looks like this um this is one here so when um when the graph approaches to 1, it's actually somewhere on the 2 million level. Okay, that's it. So what is the meaning of this? So if you notice, when your value gets close to 1, let's say you started from 3 and you get close to 1, the value of f of x goes to 2 million. And if it's starting from the negative uh, 1 and it goes to 1, it still goes to 1 million. So that means the value of f of x goes with no bound. So, so meaning to say that as x gets close to 1, the value of f of x gets bigger and bigger. So in this case, if we take the limit of f of x as x approaches 1, the value is infinity that's positive infinity so this is actually the intuitive idea of uh, getting the infinite limits of a given function okay so we will introduce the formal definition of um, these infinite limits so given that you have a function f which is defined at every number in some open interval i containing a of course, except possibly at the number a itself. So, here's the thing. We say that f of x increases, of course, respectively decreases, without bound as x approaches a. And if it increases, we write this limit symbol. 
If it decreases, we also write this. If for every positive number k, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that f of x is greater than k when it is positive and it, when it is um, decreases without bound. So this is the corresponding um, interval. And uh, I mean corresponding identity. And whenever this is our interval here. Okay, so if you're interested on how it is being represented as a geometric interpretation, I already have provided a video for that when I introduced the limit of a function. So you might want to check on that and here's the thumbnail. Okay, so we will now introduce a theorem in order for us to solve the limit of a function. So the theorem says that if r is a positive integer, um, this is a positive integer, then the first one says that the limit of 1 over x to the r as x approaches um, 0 from the right is always positive infinity. The second one says that the limit of 1 over x to the r as x approaches 0 from the left has two conditions. It is negative infinity if r is add. This is positive infinity if r is even. So we can use this um, theorem in order for us to solve the limits of a function if the function format it looks like this this one if it doesn't look like that then we can use not use this theorem so we will apply this theorem of uh, for cases like this so let's consider example um let's say um we're interested uh, to find the limit of one over x to the six as x approaches zero from the right so if it's zero from the right then we will use number one so this is automatically positive infinity that's it let's consider another example limit of one over x to the five as x approaches uh, zero from the left so if it's zero from the left then we will use this number two but according to number two because if you notice, the r here as the exponent of x is 5, which is add. So if it's add, this is equivalent to negative infinity. Okay. Okay, so this time, we will now introduce another theorem. So we will use this theorem for a format wherein you have a rational expression of function. So um, the theorem says, so if you have a as an any real number and then um, if you have a format of a function of the form um, f of x over g of x like that so and then you already know that the limit of g of x is 0 as x approaches a and then um, the limit of f of x as x approaches a is some constant c and then this c is not zero take note of that then we have different cases first case is if the limit of the numerator the f of x i mean is greater than zero and your g of x approaches zero through positive values of g of x so that means the g of x here approaches zero through positive values then the answer of the limit entirely is positive infinity now if in the event that um, g of x um, approaches zero through negative values then the answer is negative infinite infinity so meaning to say the first and the second case are, are actually having the same c the only difference is that the g of x for the first case through positive value while the second case is through negative value and so they have this different result
on the third case and fourth case, the value of C is negative. Okay, for the negative part, for number 3, the G of X approaches 0 through positive. So, when it is negative and it's through positive, the result is negative. When it is negative through negative for the G of X, the result is positive. So, we will apply this theorem for a given example so that we can check on that. Um, let's say we're interested to get... Okay, let's label this as number 1. Interested to get the limit of 3x plus 1 over all over x squared minus 2x as x approaches 2 plus 2 from the right. Okay, so our a here is 2. Okay, so that's in any real number. Now, um, this is our f of x. This is our g of x. Okay, so first things first is, um, what's according to the definition again? The limit of the denominator is 0 and the limit of the numerator is some constant C. So let's double check first. It, does this qualify? Because if not, we cannot use this theorem. So the limit of f of x, so as x approaches a, is the same as the limit of uh, 3x plus 1 as x approaches 2 from the right. So the answer here is um, 7. So 7 is the, our C here. Okay. Now, how about if we check uh, limit of g of x? So our goal here, we must make sure that the limit of g of x, which is the denominator, should be 0. Otherwise, we cannot use this theorem. So let's double check. So that's the limit of um, x squared minus 2x as x approaches 2 from the right. So the answer here is 0. You simply substitute 2 here, that's 4 minus 4, that's 0. So there, this means that um, the condition is satisfied. Now let's double check. The C here is positive. Okay. So when it is positive and then, so it's positive, so we will double check either 1 or 2 but um the g of x here so to uh, let's double check if it's from the right or from the left because if you notice um if you try to substitute let's take a value from the right of 2 so that's 3 if you substitute 3 here you get 9 minus 6 that's 3 and it's positive so that means to say that the g of x approaches 0 from the right side of 2. So meaning to say we will use condition 1 here. Therefore, the answer for this theorem is positive infinity. That's it. Okay, so we will consider another example. Um, let's say we're interested... Um, to solve, um, to take the limit of negative 5x over 1 minus x as x approaches 1 from the left. Okay, so as usual, uh, the same uh, method, um, this is our f of x, this is our g of x. So we'll uh, take the limit first of the numerator, which is the f of x. Um, okay, so this is the limit of negative 5x as x approaches uh, 1 from the left. In this case, this is equal to negative 5. So meaning to say our c is less than 0. So we have now the idea that we can, we have uh, to use either 3 or 4. But let's double check the g first. So the limit of um, 1 minus x as x approaches 1 from the left, this is 0. So that means it's satisfied. And so if you if you try to evaluate this, uh, if you try to take a look into this, what makes it zero? Um, if you have to take from uh, um, the left side of one, let's say zero point nine, the answer is uh, zero point one. So it approaches uh to zero because if you take um right side of um one the answer here is negative so so in this case it goes through zero through the negative values 
So therefore, we can check um, condition, so less than 0 for C and then through negative value, so we use number 4. So therefore, the answer here is negative, uh, I'm sorry, it's positive infinity. That's it. Okay, so we have to consider another example again. So let's not take number 3. So the limit of negative 2 square root of 5 minus x as all over x cubed as x approaches 0 from the left. Okay, so let's double check first the numerator. So the limit of negative 2 square root of 5 minus x as x approaches 0 from the left. So technically, this is um, x is 0, so you have negative 2 square root of 5, and this is less than c. I'm sorry, less than um, 0, so it's negative. This is your c here. Okay, we take the limit first of um, x cubed as x approaches 0 from the left. That's equal to 0, so it's satisfied. But, we will have to double check at which value. Now, if you take a look into this, your x cube um, is less than 0 for every values of x less than 0. So that means it's true negative. So that means we will use theorem number 3. So less than 0 and it's true negative. So the answer here is negative infinity. That's it. Okay, so um, for now, we will have to stop it for now, but um, there are a lot of theorems that we are going to use in order for us to solve for cases wherein uh, we will have in infinite limits of function. So I have to say that we will have a part two for this video. So thank you so much uh, for watching. So if you have any questions, clarifications, Please don't hesitate to comment down there so that I would know. And of course, we will be discussing that. Okay? So see you for the next part for this video um, for the infinite limits of function. So thank you again and have a great day.